Hello and welcome to this PIR live event webinar brought to you by Partners in Research Canada. My name is Ben Hobbs and I will be your host today. If you're joining us live, rem uh, remember that you can ask questions at any time by clicking the Q&A, which is located in the bottom center of your Zoom window. And I will relay these uh, questions to our guests during the Q&A portion of the webinar. If you see a question in there that you would like the answer to, you can prioritize that question by clicking the thumbs up icon that should be just below it. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our guest today, Dr. Deji Iranande, uh, Associate Professor in the Department of Psychi Psych Psychology and the Department of Psychiatry at Queen's University. Um, sorry for butchering your name there. I'll let you take it from here, Deji. Right. Um, good afternoon. Can you see my screen? Uh, not yet. You'll have, there we go. Perfect. Great. Well, good afternoon and thanks for the invitation to present today. Um, I'll be speaking about anxiety and it's something we're probably all quite familiar with in our own different ways and hopefully we'll cover a few aspects of that. So just to give my background, I work with Queen's University and I'm the medical director of a program called Heads Up. And it's a program for people, young people, who may be experiencing mental disorders. Um, and I have no declarations of interest. I'll give an overview and sort of things we'll cover will be what's normal anxiety, what anxiety disorders are, what helps with anxiety, and what worsens anxiety. And I really look forward to taking your questions. Now, all sorts of words are used to describe our experience of anxiety. Um, stress, jitteriness, unease, butterflies, tension, edginess, a whole range of words. And it refers to an experience that many people may have at one stage or another in their lives. For instance, many of you and us uh, may have been involved in athletics and had your hearts really pounding before you started the race with the exhilaration of either winning or in my case, not winning the race, but still having some experience. We also seek activities that make our hearts beat faster and give us a sort of tension and anxiety. For instance, um, playing sport, um, football, soccer, tennis, um, using a skateboard. And for those interested in basketball, the experience with the Raptors quite recently. We also seek anxiety in some situations, watching particular movies that make us feel tense um, and make our hearts beat a little bit faster, like horror movies, um, or playing games on our um, devices that may also involve a bit of action and make us have some experience of anxiety. For many of us as students and professors and other works of life, um, studying for exams, preparing for exams, and uh, activities associated with study may also increase our anxiety in day-to-day -day life. Some people have had quite adverse experiences like being bullied or having nasty experiences from other people, which may leave them feeling anxious as well. For some people, money worries can be a great cause of anxiety. So, a lot of things can make us anxious, yet not all anxiety is an illness, and some of that we'll cover in greater detail. So we all worry or get frightened from time to time, and it can be quite a good thing if it helps us prepare for an activity or to avoid danger. Sometimes, however, this can be too much and can get in the way of enjoying life. And the sort of worry or fear that's excessive is what we call anxiety in the context of a disorder. Does this look familiar? So consider a situation where the mind is racing, it's difficult to concentrate, um, yes, but, no, but, uh, maybe um, possible sleep disturbance, feeling breathless, breathing faster, a nausea or loss of appetite, and rumbling in the tummy, feeling restless, jelly legs, feeling like running away from a situation, sweaty palms, shivering, trembling, heart racing and palpitations, find difficult to swallow with a dry mouth, vision feeling rather blurry or feeling rather dizzy. Now that could 
happen to any of us. And these are some of the symptoms of anxiety people may experience. If we use an example of preparing for exams, now we'll look at the black curve and the red curve with the red arrows. Now, it's normal to feel anxious before exams and some degree of anxiety can actually help us perform a bit better and after, or in a race, and then after the event has come to pass, we feel comfortable and okay. However, if we look at the red arrows, in, in some situations, the anxiety goes up, 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 and just never ending feeling as if it's not going to end, and we feel quite distressed about it. And it's that sort of anxiety that occurs in disorders. So keep that image in mind. We may find ourselves in situations where we're anxious with our thoughts racing, with a lot of worries going on and on, making it difficult to concentrate or relax. We may find our hearts pal experiencing palpitations as if it's a drum beating. We're breathing and it's much, much faster. And we feel rather breathless without having done much. Loss of appetite and just feeling low in our energy. Difficulty sleeping and rather than feel comfortable just tossing and turning in bed and unable to sleep because of our worries. We try and problem solve and it feels like we're in a maze. You know, um, we make moves and maneuvers and we still feel there's something missing, like a missing piece of a jigsaw puzzle in day-to-day -day problems. And while our friends or people around us have their batteries fully charged, we feel ours are quite low and we feel run down and quite different under such situations. And it seems as if life's just hammering us with challenges, stress, worry in our day-to-day -day lives. And that can be the sort of pervasive experience of what anxiety can be for some people. Anxiety is a common mental health problem and many young people have an anxiety disorder. So you're not alone if you do experience it. Lots of people, however, suffer in silence and hopefully after today, you'll feel comfortable to talk about it. It's important to recognize it and to seek help. Now, one of the feelings when we're anxious is a sense of danger. When we feel we're in danger, our brain tells us our bodies should get away, um, run away or move away from the place. And we may feel this in our mind or also physically in our bodies. And this is caused by a chemical in the body known as adrenaline, which can feel, leave us feeling with a flight, as in running away or moving away, fright, freeze, or even a fight response. And we all respond to anxiety in different ways. And um, that's quite interesting for some of us who work with people with different responses to anxiety. We may also have bodily sensations. So with anxiety, we may feel sick, shaky, dizzy, our heart racing, short of breath, as mentioned earlier, and butterflies in the stomach. And important to stress that in different cultures and languages, we may have different words and descriptions used. So not all cultures will refer to butterflies in the stomach. In the mind, we can feel upset, worried, irritable, unable to relax, and again, difficulty concentrating. And if we think of the range of these things, this will make being in class or in school or with our families quite challenging. So we'll cover a, t a number of types of anxiety disorder, and I'll start with fears and phobias. And many of us have a fear or phobia of some sort. And anxiety disorders are grouped into the different sorts. So for instance, many people have a fear of the dark or insects when they're really young. And as they get older, that sort of anxiety dissipates and leaves. Um, however, for some people, the anxiety and the fear and the phobia persists for much longer. And um, this may stop us from doing things we normally enjoy. We may avoid situations that have the things we're anxious about or we have a phobia for. So it could be avoiding water because we're frightened of something that we saw in water once or being, have a phobia for birds and feathers and so on. You can't really have a phobia for things that are genuinely dangerous. So it's, you're not likely to have an alligator phobia or a tiger phobia. General anxiety, some people feel anxious most of the time for no obvious reason. And when it's really bad, they can't concentrate in school or have fun. They feel anxious and sad at the same time sometimes, and it may be really difficult. However, it is possible to cope with this and get help to make one feel better. 
sometimes general anxiety actually runs the family. So we may have a grandma or grandpa, mum or dad, who were also very anxious and could have reported suffering nerves or being a worrier. And we also may have that also passed down in the family. Separation anxiety. Think back to your very first day in school when mummy and daddy waved at you. Now, some people could have held on to mum and dad's legs, feeling really anxious and not wanting to leave, and others jollily moving on. But separation anxiety is a feeling of anxiety when you're being away from people you have a close attachment to. It's normal in very young children. Many of us would have grown out of it, but for some people it lingers on much longer. Social anxiety. Now, social anxiety is more than just feeling shy. It's a, quite an overwhelming experience where the person feels comfortable with people they know well, but in situations like um, giving talks or in public places or social occasions and parties, they feel really, really uncomfortable. It could be standing up in class or assembly, it could be very difficult, um, or even a situation where they think the person feels they're being observed, like having a meal. And this may lead to the person actually avoiding situations that involve other people. Panic disorder and panic attack. A panic attack is an extreme episode of anxiety that seems to occur for no reason. It may feel as if the mind's going totally out of control. Um, and it's quite a worry for the person going through it because they may feel they're losing their mind, they're going um, to die or they're about to have a heart attack. However, it's really important to remember that the feeling actually does come to pass, although it doesn't feel like that when it's occurring. So with this illustration, with a panic attack, the anxiety goes up, it feels overwhelming, but ultimately, I'd like to reassure you, it will come down. Post-traumatic stress disorder is another form of anxiety, and this occurs after being involved or witnessing a traumatic or very horrific event a car crash, violence, someone getting hurt, for example. And the anxiety may present as flashbacks or feeling as if it's happening over and over and over again, which may affect sleep and other aspects of life. And quite often the person with PTSD avoids reminders, places, people, or situations linked to the traumatic experience. Obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD. Sometimes we have thoughts that just won't go away. For instance, germs on our hands or doors unlocked. We may wash our hands frequently or keep checking locks. And some people may even have very specific rituals. And the recurring thoughts are called obsessions. So obsessions are the mental process, what goes on in our mind. And the action that follows the thought is then the compulsion, the recurring actions. We often know this is excessive when it's happening, but we feel a need to do this unless something bad may happen. And often to try and reduce anxiety, the person tries to do something about it. In fact, some people may have magic numbers as well as part of their ritual. So what causes anxiety disorders? Well, we don't always know the cause. I mean, some we know because there's been an event like um, PTSD. But sometimes people may have upsetting or frightening experiences like being bullied, a family having an illness themselves, loss of a loved one or family member, parents separating, and a number of people may be able to cope with this, and some may find it difficult to manage. In fact, some people can cope quite well with one or two events, but if it's one thing after another after another, it may be quite much. Um, parents separating, a, um, a death in the family, moving home, changing school, all occurring at the same time may cause anxiety. It may also run in families, as mentioned earlier, and some may be passing genes, which we've got no control over. However, we can learn to manage this. For instance, um, avoiding situations where we're around people who are anxious all the time and may add to how we feel or observing people anxious and copying their behavior. So if fam family or friends are anxious or they're harsh about your experience of anxiety, Please let them know that's making you feel worse. So getting help. As mentioned, some people grow out of anxiety, like separation anxiety. And the good news is, on the whole, anxiety disorders are treatable. There's a lot you can do with friends and family to make you feel better. And often, if you talk to someone and share the experience or seek help, 
there are very experienced professionals in your school um, through your family physician and, and in some organizations who can help you with anxiety. Treatment varies and um, one of the major th treatments for anxiety disorders is psychological therapy. There's a type of psychological therapy known as cognitive behavior therapy, CBT, and that can help you understand and deal with the cause of anxiety and also give you strategies for coping, such as relaxation techniques. Mindfulness can also be considered and some people find yoga and things like that quite helpful. Some people also find the use of medication and some medications, for instance, one of the types of antidepressant medication called an SSRI may be helpful in specific cases, but please ask your health professional for advice on this. What I will emphasize is living with anxiety problems is difficult, but it's treatable and doesn't have to leave you feeling unhappy for many, many years of your life. So what healthy ways can we use? Well, one step you can take straight away is to tell someone, and that's a major step, telling someone, a parent, teacher, counselor, doctor, about the experiences you're having and how persistent and distressing they are. Remember the red arrows at the beginning, how the anxiety just hasn't come down. Um, avoid leaving things till late. For instance, start and prepare for an exam, the morning of the exam, that will give you anxiety. Avoid using drugs or alcohol to manage it. Um, and reduce or avoid using stimulants like, like caffeine. Caffeine actually increases adrenaline. And many of the energy drinks contain caffeine in them. In fact, many have more caffeine than cups of coffee. And where possible, and school has lots of activities that involve this, engage in relaxing activities. Unhealthy ways of dealing with anxiety, some of them are opposites, but don't keep it to yourself. Don't get angry with yourself. Try and get enough sleep. Avoid drugs and alcohol. And with the amount of vaping going on, um, vaping and nicotine and the effects can also worsen anxiety in quite a number of individuals. Now, some people may feel, oh, but surely cannabis, weed helps. But does it? Um, actually, it doesn't. And I'll use this image here. So, some people may find very small quantities make them feel a bit chilled out, but that effect doesn't last. And I see a lot of this in the work I do. Uh, with cannabis use, the anxiety gets worse, particularly in social situations. A number of people develop paranoia and start getting rather suspicious of people around them, and then may develop hallucinations and delusions, which then leads to psychosis. So cannabis does not help. It's not a treatment for anxiety. And in many cases, particularly in young people with developing brains can make anxiety much, much worse. There's a lot going on on social media, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, and Twitter. And in that light, um, one should also manage that quite wisely. So you're looking to solve your problems um, and getting the best help and advice is important. Your well-being, connect, keep positive relationships, keep active, learn to enjoy things and savor the moment, keep learning, and um, find goodness in actually giving, and you'll get back as well. Learn ways of relaxing, we relax in different ways. Our pets, our dogs, cats, music, and so on may help, and these all help in different ways, and find your way of relaxing. So finally, don't forget we're all different. Every single one of us may have an experience of anxiety and how we manage it is important and not all anxiety is an anxiety disorder. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, just before we move into the Q&A today, I'd like to remind those classrooms who are joining us live um, to direct their questions to the Q&A, which is located in the bottom center of your Zoom console. Um, so our first question today comes from the grade six sevens at St. John Fisher and their question is, how do you know if you have an anxiety disorder and need to seek help? Well, I would say if you're experiencing, and thanks, is that Sir John Fisher School? St. John Fisher School. St. John Fisher School. Well, um, hello. Um, I would say if the symptoms persist, the things I described earlier, the heart beating faster, not being able to sleep, feeling really, really restless, 
and, and worried about it. Um, and it persists and it's affecting the, your quality of life on a daily basis, I would speak to someone. So if you think back to the earlier image and probably what's behind me now, um, that's something, if that continues, then I would seek help. If it's um, just short lived, just before an exam and stops the day after, that wouldn't be a disorder. So we've got a little bit of a follow up, um, not from the same classroom, but they're wondering, um, where do you go when you feel like you might be suffering from anxiety? Well, schools are actually really good and many schools have counselors and people trained to support students. Um, if it's a home, you can mention it to mum and dad. And um, I would say when you do mention it, encourage the person to take you seriously so they don't just brush aside, oh, it's okay, you'll get over it. Um, if you mention to a counsellor in school, that may be helpful, or your teacher. And many schools have someone that you can speak with in confidence about how you feel. Otherwise, you can speak with your family physician, um, your GP, or a nurse in the practice. Um, some people actually have um, a group of friends or clubs that support each other as well. Um, some of our sports clubs may also have someone who supports uh, us. So you may, may, for instance, play football and there may be someone on the coaching team that supports people with anxiety. But the most important thing is mention it to someone that you trust um, to help you seek help and don't feel shy or embarrassed about it. Most of us have been anxious at one time or another before. Are there any situations where anxiety could actually be beneficial? Oh, yes. Um, now, if you watch sporting events, um, you may see athletes, for instance, for the 100 meters race or the dash, pacing up and down. And what they're doing is trying to just balance their anxiety. They've got the headphones on and they're preparing for the event. And that helps with initial amounts of anxiety can actually help with performance, the adrenaline and just the right amount. However, if it then overshoots, that can be problematic. So it's quite beneficial and actually, even in day-to-day -day life, um, if you're going out on a trek, that anxiety or vigilance may keep you um, alert to risk of danger, um, like a snake or something. So anxiety does have benefits and it's when it's then excessive and persistent that it becomes a disorder. But we all need some anxiety. Um, Ms. McCall's quite, uh, classroom has the next question and they're wondering, why are so many people impacted by anxiety now? Well, it's, it's a big debate question. And some people actually argue that we're in the age of anxiety and that um, with the pace of social media and the desire to look perfect, look good, um, be good on Instagram, have loads of likes, that that's now a new measure of self-esteem. So it, it is a different pace of life and the need and the urgency to have something happen immediately and straight away, maybe changing the way we feel about life. Um, so that may be one of the reasons. Um, other reasons may be that information is shared so much more quickly. Um, people may copy other behaviors as well, but anxiety has been around with humanity for many, many years. Have you noticed any significant increase um, in anxiety disorders specifically in, in young people in recent years? Um, a specific type I've noticed or types would be one, a number of people finding it difficult with the use of social media, um, feeling left out um, or with just the pace and the desire to have lots of likes and so on and looking perfect and not feeling perfect in themselves. Anxiety to do with body image as well. So along those themes, we are seeing quite a number of people, but also um, with substance use. And I see a lot of young people who develop quite disturbing anxiety symptoms with the use of cannabis. Um, and is it possible for anxiety to turn into depression? Yes, it can. In fact, anxiety and depression are very close buddies. So anxiety would make depression worse and depression will make anxiety worse. So if you're depressed and anxious and you've then got lots and lots and lots of worries, that will worsen the depression. Um, and if one's really, really anxious and it persists for a long time, it can make our moods go low. So depression and anxiety are very close buddies. If, if we know someone who has anxiety and is using cannabis, um, do you have any suggestions for what, what we should do? Um, 
I, I think the first step would be to let the person know that you're quite concerned um, and to let them know or ask them if they actually are getting some benefits. Some people may say yes, but it helps me chill out. But to let them know that if they're young with developing brains, uh, which they will have up to the age of about 25, that it's likely to worsen the anxiety rather than improve it over time. So I would encourage the person to cut down their cannabis use and certainly, certainly not use high potency THC. Do you have any advice for educators um, to help young people who are dealing with these feelings of anxiety? Yes. Well, I, I think it's important that we distinguish between normal anxiety that all of us have. Interestingly, I had my Fitbit on before the presentation and during, and I know my pulse went up just a bit before the presentation, and now it's come down a bit. So anxiety can be normal. Everyone gets anxious at one time or another, and we shouldn't feel every feeling of a heart beating faster, feeling sweaty palms, um, breathing quicker is not necessarily an anxiety disorder. Anxiety can be normal and healthy for day-to-day -day functioning. However, if we do have an anxiety disorder, PTSD, OCD, and the rest, to seek professional help. So distinguishing what's normal, healthy anxiety from pathological anxiety. And many people think all anxiety is pathological, and it isn't. Do you believe um, that technology has played a role in the increase um, of anxiety disorder disorders? Um, there are some studies that suggest that, and what that suggests more is, for instance, a lot more bullying can be done online, um, on the internet. People actually, one of the slides I had was shown about connection and building social relationships. It's a lot easier to be disconnected um, with technology, although you feel connected, but not actually having interpersonal interaction. So that can be tricky. So if some people get bullied. Also the sense of immediacy with technology, where people want things and they want it now, um, with immediate effects, and that, that can add a sort of sense of urgency and not help relax. So technology is at a rather quick pace, and it's, it's good, it's useful, we're using it now, so I'm not gonna be hypocritical. However, technology, hours and hours of gaming, the speed of that um, with our day-to-day -day challenges can be stressful for some people and worsen anxiety. Um, can anxiety contain concurrent disorders? Uh, and what advice do you have for such concurrent disorders? Now, um, by concurrent disorders, I assume the question means anxiety and other disorders, whether to do with substance use um, or other things. And um, if that's what was intended, the answer is yes. In fact, a lot of people may use substances, alcohol, drugs, and other things. Um, to try and manage their anxiety. Um, anxiety can come with any disorder. In fact, any mental health problem can have anxiety as a component, whether it's psychosis, depression, um, bipolar, and, and so on. For our grade 12s that are watching, do you know of any help or services that are available at the university level? Oh yes, in fact, universities, work with anxiety a lot. And um, for instance, my university, there's a whole health service that specializes in supporting students in distress. Um, there's psychologists, counselors, physicians, um, psychiatrists, GPs as well. Also lots of university clubs are geared towards reducing anxiety. And some universities actually even have pets and animals um, you can cuddle in exam period and so on. So there are lots of opportunities available in university. And I'd say for those going on into university, beware. Some people use all sorts of drugs for study, which just make them worse and could cause anxiety problems. Be aware your difference. And every single one of us is different. And when you go into the big world of university, um, it can feel like a big ocean. But don't let it get you down. Um, we're all different and do things at your own pace. Do you know of any health complications that can arise um, from prolonged anxiety? Um, well, ultimately, reduced quality of life and um, prolonged anxiety can trigger depression. Um, some people with prolonged anxiety may comfort eat and put on weight, therefore having less self-esteem. Um, some people with severe anxiety may have hair loss some people with severe anxiety may start having
having recurrent gastric um, tummy problems and so on. So anxiety can actually affect us from head to toe if it's prolonged. However, importantly, seeking help can reduce the distress this causes. Do you have any advice for avoiding social media or minimizing the effect of social media on anxiety? Um, I'll avoid any big brother comments. Uh, and and I, uh, um, ultimately, once again, we are using a medium now to communicate. So social media isn't always bad. However, I would say if it's defining your life, if your whole day is all around staring at your computer screen, and you stay at the screen more than looking in your friend's eyes um, or not find time to chat with the family, then I would say looking for downtime. In fact, a young person once said to me that, oh, we're no longer used to making eye contact. We look at the screen and we look at people through the screen. And, and that's a bit tricky. So I would say finding downtime. There's a lot of fun you can do. And maybe you can give your phone or device some amnesty once in a while and do other things that are fun. Um, so do you, um, do you know if it's possible for anxiety to turn into a, another mental disorder if not dealt with properly? Um, now anxiety may be like a sort of front runner of another type of mental disorder. So I may be de developing a psychotic illness. I may be paranoid and wonder why on earth I can, I'm hearing strange voices um, saying things to me. So anxiety may in those contexts present as a symptom of a mental disorder. Um, and anxiety, as I said, if it persists, can be part of other mental disorders or lead to, but um, anxiety is a common symptom of many mental disorders. And some people could have a mental disorder, um, another type of mental disorder and anxiety. So a person could have psychosis and anxiety, an anxiety disorder, or actually have anxiety as a symptom of a mental disorder. We're almost out of time for today, um, but before we wrap things up, I was hoping to have you speak a little bit about um, your career path um, and maybe some advice for students who are considering something similar for themselves. Great, well, what I'll suggest is first, whatever you choose to do, do something you love. Um, if you have a passion for it and you enjoy it, it'll be really, really cool and fun. Um, I love working with young people. So a psychiatrist is primarily a doctor. I went to medical school, I've delivered babies, I've done surgery. However, the work in mental health then is, so a psychiatrist is a doctor who specializes in work with mental health and mental health problems. Um, so I would say a journey towards being a psychiatrist would be going to med school um, and then choosing a specialty um, in my case, psychiatry, um, that you have passion for. But it's something I love, and psychiatry can be carried out with all sorts, sports, older people, younger people, and so on. Well, that's all, we, all the time we have for today, but thank you so much for taking the time to talk about this important subject with us today. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> More information about these webinars and other PIR educational programs are available at PIRweb.org. Thanks for tuning in and have a wonderful day. Thank you for inviting me.